Recently, John Kelly, a good friend of mine who's the pastor of Chicago West Bible Church, came and preached a message in our series on justice. I encourage you to go and listen to that message in case you missed it. But after that sermon, we sat down and had a conversation, just two pastors talking about how to lead our churches in this current cultural moment. We talked about the political climate, about racial tensions, about people growing closer to Christ. And rather than make you listen to an hour-long conversation between two pastors, we've broken that up into segments. And so what you're about to see is the next segment in a conversation between two pastors. Jesus' day was almost identical to our day. Hmm. Yeah. Jews felt oppressed by Rome. So it was like, when are we going to, like, there was, so there was a cause for justice mm -hmm. and injustice all the time. They didn't like the Romans' authorities. In fact, they dictated stuff at the temple and certain things. There were tax collectors who took advantage of people. They still had people who robbed people and did this and that. There were severe racial tensions. Mm -hmm. Jews and Samaritans didn't talk. And even in the temple, there was the outer courts for the right, Gentiles. Right. Right, women, the Gentiles women, couldn't yeah. even. And, and Christians struggle with this. Think about this. Remember in the book of Acts, God had to give Peter a vision yeah. to tell him it was okay to go witness to Cornelius. He had to use animals on his sheep. He had to use they, animals. And Peter was like, I'll never message. eat anything unclean. Yeah. Right? But Peter even struggled. In Galatians, Paul said Peter was a hypocrite. That's right. He would sit down and eat with the Gentiles. And then when the Jews, he said the circumcision program, the Jews came, Peter would back away from them. And Paul, and Paul had to call him out. Paul said, I, I called him out to his face. said, yep. you're being a hypocrite. You, how can you sit here in fellowship with the Jews and treat them like brothers and sisters in Christ? And then as soon as, I mean, the Gentiles, and as soon as the Jews come, you, so the reality is, again, I think. That's, that's interesting, isn't it? Peter was willing to eat with the Gentiles until those got around him who might judge him. And that's convicting. It, and it, no, and we, we struggle with the same things because there's these categories, and Jesus came and broke down categories. Yeah. I mean, even a Samaritan woman was like, you know, men don't really talk alone with women. And yet it was women mm -hmm. who were the first people that Jesus revealed himself to after the resurrection. It was women who were the first, first evangelists. Women. First, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. And so Jesus kind of, he broke every cultural bound, uh, boundary um, that wasn't violating any scripture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it got so petty that even the Pharisees asked Jesus one day, why is it that your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat? It was like, oh my gosh, can they get more petty than that? Well, today we have to do that. because Right, no, I get it. No, but the point I'm just trying to say is, is that there's these categories and Jesus was trying to show everyone yeah, a different right. way. Yeah. And the struggle with who is my neighbor is Jesus constantly was teaching them, your neighbor is anyone that doesn't yeah. look like you, anyone that's around you, everyone outside of you, Samaritans, the mm -hmm. Roman centurion, it's the, it's the, you know, the Gentile, it's the tax collector, it's, it's women in a culture that right. puts women down. Like, no, they, they come with us, they walk with us, right. we do life together, and so. We read those categories you're listing and they sound biblical to us and distant from us, but they're, 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 a lot of those are politically charged issues. Very politically charged. So let me get charged. political on you. Go ahead, John. shoot it. Yeah, yeah. You can ask any question you want about anything. <laughs> Here's a question. I find in our context, families are dividing, brothers and sisters in the church are dividing over different sides of the political aisle. And not just, I disagree with you, but you are the problem because you didn't vote that way or because you supported that person or you didn't support that person. Is that, do you see the same thing happening in your context? Yeah, I, I do. Um, You're saying it's more of a white church problem? No, no. I think um, our church is a little, uh, you know, my context is a little different. I'm not Republican or Democrat. And I think, and I'm not saying like I'm better than anybody, but it's given me, an, it's given me a view that, yeah. in the, at least in a sense, doesn't give me blinders to anything yeah. in that category. I have, blinders, I have blind spots in other categories, mm -hmm. but I tend to not so much in politics because I'm not Republican or Democrat. And with Prison Fellowship, when we do advocacy, at con like, you know, I've, I mean, my heart breaks when I saw that on Capitol Hill because I've been to that building plenty of times. I go to yeah. D.C. like 10 times a year. And, and so I get it. Um, but we I, we, I have to work with Republicans and Democrats. It doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter if it's Obama or Trump or whatever, because people in prison do not care about who's president when they're trying to get out. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a luxury problem. Yeah. People who are hurting, they don't care who's in office. No one's going to be like, well, I'm going to stay in here for four more years because Obama's in office. I'm going to stay in here four more years because Trump's in office. Like People <laughs> in prison don't think that way, and their families don't think that way. Um, but what I, what, I, what I find with politics is... is um, is, is so crucial and so, so divisive for people um, is because of what the parties represent. Mm -hmm. They represent a need that you have that needs to be met. 
And that's understandable for the world. So when you ask someone like, well, why are you Republican? Or why are you voting for this? Or why did you vote for Trump? Or why did you vote for Obama? You will have people in those parties that be like, I don't agree with this, 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 and this. But I'm voting because I need this, 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 and that. Mm -hmm. And then the same person over here is like, I mean, I'm, I've never met a pastor that's Democratic that, that, that agrees with abortion. But there's needs that they have that affect their immediate context that causes them to think, think of certain things and oppose other people and vice versa. I think it's wrong to think every person who's Republican is white and racist. Yeah. But there's needs that people have. The problem for Christians that we have to be aware of, and I just know because I spend a lot of time in politics, is politics is naturally a divisive area. Yeah. It's a divisive area. It's, it's very challenging because you, you like. It's just binary. Part of winning is attacking a person. Right. Like, you can't win without attacking a person. Even if they're in your own yeah. party, yeah. you have to like throw their name in the mud. So yeah. even Christians, when we approach politics, we have to understand that yeah. we're walking into a boxing match. Yeah. But the challenge that we have is, and this is what God has shown, is we're not willing to lay down our rights for the sake of others. Mm -hmm. And and what does it look like as a like for someone who votes Republican or votes Democrat yeah. to understand that laying down part of the gospel is laying down myself and sacrificing right no right. greater love as a man in this than he uh, give his life for his friends Jesus yeah. said and so I think one of the areas why politics is so so uh, is so much tension there is yeah. because it represents something that it can give us right. it's very connected to our identity on the, on this earth. And any issues of identity really is very challenging for us. It's, 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 it's adulterous. We don't know it's this. competing for allegiance in our hearts. We don't know what it means to be citizens of heaven yeah. and to be ambassadors, be people from another world. And so there's everything that politics represents. Yeah. But here's what you'll find is that there will be no cookie-cutter party. And if you think yeah. so, there will be issues that you'll be like, well, this is raw, but this is really good. And then yeah. you'll look over here, hey, that's good. But, you yeah. know, man, I love how Democrats are very sensitive, quote-unquote, to compassion for the poor and, and marginalized and disenfranchised. That's great. That's good. But, man, issues in abortion and certain things over here, that's wrong, right? And you could say certain things about Republicans. Man, I think there's great things about stewardship and certain principles and, and, and not letting government run everything and certain things that are so helpful. But man, our tone sometimes can be very insensitive. And, and mm -hmm. so you can look at certain things right. and, and Christians should find things. And I'm not saying, you know, I got friends who are devout Republicans and devout Democrats. But the only thing my challenge with them to be, would be is, hey, call it, how, call it biblically. Yeah. How you see it. I would never want to be in a relationship. Like, even as our friendship, yeah. I don't want to be a friend with Pastor Jeff and he only tells me what I want to hear but doesn't call out any wrong. Like, I would want someone to be like, man, you, you, know, you shouldn't have talked about your wife that way. You well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so, so the hard part, this is what you brought up, though, and yeah. I don't mean to keep talking. No, good. I found, and I've seen, this, I've seen it on Capitol Hill with senators. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. Um, but I've seen it with some of your, fav your favorite senators and politicians, and I've seen it locally and nationally, and I've seen it with Christians in all different churches. I found that so many people are more afraid to stand for truth because they're afraid of how the people in that camp will respond to them. Right. I found that to be probably one of the biggest threats of the church yeah. is so many people who are Christians have the fear of man, mm -hmm. and they're afraid of being shunned right. for saying, hey, this is wrong. Canceled, yeah. dismissed, yeah. Call, the, the, call the bigot or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can become isolated, and people are people are really afraid of that. So mm -hmm. th th there's a lot about politics, and I would just caution everyone just just know whatever news station you you love, you know, just know when you enter the area of politics in the world, it's naturally a very divisive. Yeah, it's you know, how it's set up. Yeah, it's it's set it's up an all or nothing. Uh, one of the things too is that in, our, in an American system, it's, it's 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 I have to support everything on this platform or nothing. And as Christians, we just have to resist that.